Hi everyone, this is Jay. I hope you're having a good Friday. Um, last week I posted a video that I had recorded in my office last year that um, was part of the Where I Write series and I got such a good response from that video on Facebook that I thought I would start um, maybe doing a series of videos sharing with you guys things about my writing process or um, book news or just answering questions. So today is the beginning of that. Um, as you can see, I am back in my office. Um, if you saw that video, you'll notice this is the orange wall that was that used to be in my office. I have since had it repainted. It's now this very soothing kind of gray color. Um, but that's okay that it's kind of simple because my walls are filled with things like this, which is uh, one of my storyboards, which we'll talk about a little bit in a second. Um, so it's April and I have kind of been busy mostly with school. As some of you may know, I'm getting my master's degree in writing popular fiction from Seton Hill and I will graduate in June. So the last couple of months have really been busy, you know, finalizing my work for school. I still have a lot to do. Um, but the good news is that I just found out that my thesis novel, which is kind of my big final project, passed both of the big reads that it had to get through. So that means I actually will probably graduate, which is good. Um, but in addition to that, I have been getting that same thesis novel uh, ready to submit to New York. Um, it's a standalone Appalachian Gothic novel that I'm calling High Lonesome Sound. Um, and I don't want to talk too much about what the story is because I am hoping to sell it but um, if things go well hopefully we'll have a contract for that soon and you'll have a new book to read in the next year or two. Um, I know it takes so long to get a book out but it's worth it uh, to do it right so hopefully that will be coming out soon. Um, so I talked about this. This is actually my storyboard for High Lonesome Sound. Um, which probably looks a little bit crazy. I don't want to get too close because I don't want to give away any of my plot points. Um, this is not how I normally do a storyboard. Uh, normally I lay it out a little differently, but this was a different book, uh, which I wrote very differently from a lot of my urban fantasies. So it kind of demanded that I do things a little differently. But the point of a storyboard is to basically keep track of the structure of your novel. Uh, in a visual way. So you can kind of look at the pacing and as you can see there's all these different colors of writing and each color is a different character. There are several point of view characters in this novel so each time the color changes it's a new character so I can keep track of you know what the, the scenes are happening in an order that develops each character's story in a way that is um, kind of works with the pacing I want for the novel. Um, so, like, if I had too many blue scenes next to each other, I'm like, well, maybe I'm spending too much time on this character and I need to switch things up a little bit. So it's a great way for me to see just kind of the big picture of the book. Um, normally, so each of these rows is a different act, although this act five is pretty busy, so it got two rows. Um, normally my books are three acts, um, but this book for some reason needed to be five. So I just kind of got it down. So I could look at it so that as I went into revisions to work on it, I could um, have a plan. It gives me a roadmap for my revisions. Um, and maybe that's a little too technical if you're not really into writing, but I know some of you are interested in how I put book, books together. And since I tend to write my books out of order, meaning I don't write from chapter one through the end, I skip around as I write. Um, this really helps me stay on track. I also use a, um, a software called Scrivener, which kind of acts as like an electronic storyboard. And I write my book in Scrivener. And what's great about it is it lets me shift scenes around um, very, very easily and keep track of the structure. Um, so I do all of my drafting in Scrivener. And then once I'm happy with my draft, I export it to Word and then I do my edits in Word. So uh, that's kind of a quick overview of kind of the technical details of how I put a book together. It's really kind of a, a process that I call puzzling because I'm kind of taking all these scenes that I've written out of order and, and playing with the structure and seeing what works best um, because I don't really write to a formula. I, um, I don't plot really uh, like a lot of writers conventionally plot. Uh, which means that my stories tend to be a little more organic and character driven. 
um, as opposed to being driven by just plot point, plot point, plot point. Some people can do that very, very well. Um, that is not how my brain processes story, though. So I do what works for me. Um, so that is a quick overview of my process, and I hope that you have found it interesting. Um, if there's anything you want me to talk about in this series of videos, please let me know in comments. I'm more than happy to tackle any of your writing questions or just questions about me or what it's like to be a writer or what I'm working on. Um, or if there's a feature, if you want me to do a book, a virtual book reading, I'd be happy to do that. Just let me know. Um, just so you know, hold on, I'm going to inelegantly grab something here. Oh, I can't find it. Um, if you haven't read Dirty Magic, I know that Barnes & Noble has it on sale right now in print for only $4.48. Um, that book normally sells for $15 because it's one of those really big, this is not, this is Deadly Spells. See, it's one of these really big, beautiful trade paperback versions. Um, Deadly Spells in this version is on sale for less than five bucks. It's normally 15 So if you've been waiting to try out that series, I would recommend that you grab it. Um, again, let me know your questions and comments, and I hope you all have a great weekend. Thanks.